All right. So we are back again today with uh, Montevallo Esports. Looking at one of their games from yesterday. I did a live reaction video to it um, yesterday while, while they were actually playing. Um, but I wanted to do a further breakdown today um, for the team. And uh, just kind of take a look at what went wrong a little bit more closely. Um, and what went right. I, I don't want to just be negative constantly. Um, but yeah. And also, there's no commentary for this. I can actually have the game sound today. But they are playing... Um, let's see here. It was Columbus State University yesterday. Um... And one thing, I know I just posted a video of their previous week's game. They did have uh, an extensive lane swap uh, situation happen. Um, Starfighter is new to top lane. That Barnacle Boy moved from uh, mid to jungle. Depressed Panda moved from support to mid. It's Groovy, I believe, was the top laner originally. And now is down at ADC. And then I'm not with him, was previously jungler, now support. So they're trying something new. Um, I can say this is their third game of the series. They won the first one, lost the second. Um, I haven't had a chance to watch the first yet, but clearly from the lane swaps, um, things have improved. Um, but yeah, so let's look at the lane matchups. I thought Garen and Set would be pretty even. Um, and not, not a bad matchup. It doesn't go as well as I thought it would. That's a bit of a spoiler, I guess you could say. But um, I thought the set silent, like silencing the set, would be beneficial. Um, but not so much. Um, and I don't know. I wish I could look at the itemization because it, maybe it is how the two built uh, around each other. I'm not really sure. I'm going to talk about the bot lane real quick and I'm going to jump to them. Um, the Twitch and Rel I, I thought was an interesting combo. Um, and I was wondering why he went W first yesterday because I've only ever played ADC Twitch. I've been informed that he does go AP in this match. Um, which explains why we go W and... Yeah. But you can see he's putting out a lot of a lot of early poke damage um, with that W, with the expunge on the early level two over their opponent. I don't necessarily think that the bot lane was in a bad matchup, except for the fact that Jinx cannot be alone with the Twitch around. That that's, I mean, basically Nautilus has to babysit, which does mean. The roaming is not um, as viable. <laughs> that or Jinx has got the farm on the chart like she is currently. I um, guess we'll go up to the mid lane. Syndra against Yone. I feel bad for the Syndra. Let's just put it that way. Um, that's going to be a pretty volatile matchup. Um, what I remember seeing yesterday, I believe they, they farmed pretty well despite the difficulty um but with his movements and the ability to get into Sinja's face it, it does make things challenging you can see he took a, a level four a little bit before the Sinja because of that being able to force Sinja off the wave every now and then yeah we do have a great first roam from the fiddlesticks I haven't had a chance to talk about him just yet, but yeah, they do barely lose out on the first blood. Actually, who did he kill? A oh, set roamed mid lane, that's what happened. Okay, so yeah, so I was wondering how a Fiddlestick skank would go pre-6. Um, but... I think mean, getting Jinx three kills early was a huge win for them, and I believe they take two turret plates off of that push as well. Um, I mean, Jinx's minigun is perfect for that. So, I mean, a great first roam, and you can also see that he's setting up some vision around the, the Drake. We got the, the Scuttle Crab while he's down there. 
Um, I wish I could have seen that roam into mid and see what happened. Actually, let's go back a second. Okay, so he came downriver. Yeah, and they pinged the board there, so he goes around, says he's on his way here. Doesn't have all the six, so there's no showstopper, but probably just very quick. One, two. Did the Garen communicate that set was missing? Set pushes the wave in. Should leave momentarily. Yeah, this is where he, he starts roaming here. Obviously, I can't see the, the, the comms. Oh, hey. Sorry, I just realized. Chad, you're in the chat. What's up? <laughs> the brown lights are okay. Anyway, sorry. Brief distraction with the Twitch chat. Um, but yeah. I, I, I can't tell that anything was actually communicated since I'm not in the comms. I hope. Uh, I hope something was said since it wasn't pinged, because that's just. I don't know. That'd be pretty rough. Also, the Swajwani re engaged there was just a really poor decision on their part. And Fiddlesix was lucky with the heal there that the expunge didn't take him down completely. You can see here though, like the Syndra is keeping him at bay with the with the knockback. The only problem is that she does consistently miss the stuns, and yeah, it's that that was um, that's a problem throughout the game. Unfortunately, um, I don't know if it's nerves because it's game three, or just. I don't know, some misclicks, or just not enough time on Syndra. Um, I mean, the stun is essential to the combination, the combo that she can do. Um, so missing that, obviously, can be problematic. Anyway, it settled down after the nice 3-0 uh, three gank down bot. Going back to farming. But yeah, so like, gets the stun there, but doesn't capitalize with any extra poke. I, I, I do think whenever you land the stun, there, there should be some sort of, um, some sort of follow-up on that. You can see just another knockback, no stun there. Yeah. And it's not that it's like, Terrible that it happened. That it continues to happen. It just could be more beneficial, obviously. I do you like the Nautilus? I, I like the Nautilus hooks. That the plays like looking to get aggressive consistently is nice. I wish the Jinx traps had been a little bit more successful because that's twice so far that we have seen the Jinx miss the traps. Which I'm not trying to knock them for it because it is challenging um when you know your opponent can go invisible and you're not really looking to get the support with them it'd be, it'd be nice to get both of them but you know you can see the garen set matchup is going well right here and sejuani spends a lot of time up on the top lane and doesn't actually go for the tower dive play like i expected it to Bam. All right, but yeah, so there you can see the trap was um, successful in finding the Twitch, netted them another kill. Great all around play, looking, looking for continued aggression in the bot lane while they have a lead. Thought that was well done. Also, the early dragon, setting up early dragon stacking is also just a huge benefit. 
You can see just so many turret plates you're getting here, and it's all being funneled into this Jinx. Which I, I feel like is definitely one of the highlights of this match. Definitely some great moments down uh, bought with the uh, with the new change to the the lane lineup. Yeah, just clearing out some wards. Yone. Say to this yesterday, but I hate the fail six little statues. Scare the crap out of me when I'm playing against one. And I don't mind the fiddlesticks pick. It's certainly not something that you'll probably see very often anymore. Uh, I forgot about the missed flash. <laughs> Just the wasted flash, I love it. Um, and a good job pinging it out, making sure that, it's so, that everybody's aware and getting the timing on it. But anyway, I don't mind the fiddlesticks pick. But I guess the Sichuani and the set where they can be easily repositioned um, or stunned up during the ult, it does make it problematic. Yeah, I do like love this play from the Twitch here. Just completely walking around them. <laughs> like, it feels, it feels a little bad for them. Um, Just because, like, you know, try to go for an aggressive play while Twitch was alone and it didn't quite work out. But the Fiddlestick says. <laughs> Fiddlestick says it's all and he goes for a kill. A nice roam bot after they push the wave and couldn't find the Twitch. All around great play there. Netted in the kill against the Yone who had his flash down. So, like, early game. So well played. They've got a 2.3k goal lead at this point. Um, this, I think, is one of the first mistakes here. Just an easy ult. And then he has to use his stopwatch to try to save his life. But he has nobody protected when he comes out of the stopwatch. So yeah. I, I, do, I do consider that to be one of the first mistakes. And that flash, I think, was his second. I think the Rockets could have given the range that she needed to finish her off and could have saved the summer, but when did she use the cleanse? Sorry, I just noticed that's down. Yeah, the cleanse is already used. Let's see here. Yeah, not having stopwatch. Um, is huge for the later fights because it does take a minute it does take a minute to actually um you know get the zanyas okay so use the cleanse there to finish her off but yeah but then nautilus takes a poor pathing out of there they get his flash as well so maybe not the best invade leads to losing a stopwatch and three flashes along with the cleanse. So you can see how like one mistake kind of led to the mini. Um, which is a bit unfortunate. Double gold lead. They didn't really lose anything off of it besides some shutdowns. But, you know. I would recommend could you be invading as a squishy when you're pretty sure people are around. Get some vision down because you can only you can see there's only one ward in that bush there, which doesn't really let you know that the blue buff was safe to steal. It's like try to clear out some vision, make sure that you're okay. Mark where the enemies are, know that you have eyes on them. But yeah, but flash still down in the middle for Yone. Repeat gank. Middle six is able to take him down. Great, great play. So they came back from the stake, made a made a solid choice on where to go next. And so I, I definitely respect that. I still don't know, like, I'm not sure how the set was able to take so many turret plates. 
I, I haven't paid attention to this 20 so much. But yeah, this is mistake number two as far as like big mistakes. This is one thing I wanted to talk about for sure after yesterday. So, so yeah. Great hook onto the target. Getting the Sejuani. Alright, cool. Let's all turn and burn. Let's see. But then, yeah, the Rel is able to get in there, stun them up for an easy Sejuani play. Um, so this one ultimately comes down to positioning. Start off well with the Nautilus. Yeah. Taking that positioning there. But yeah. You can see once the Sejuani gets out, they should have backed up. But they instead went further into the choke, allowing an easy stun for Rel. And then Sejuani is able to toss the ult from the side around the Nautilus who is wanting to take this. And then Twitch is able to free fire with his extended range on his ult from the side on the three targets that he wants to hit. And able to get around here for one more kill in this whole situation. And that expunge just doing an, just already a, a rough amount of damage there. But that positioning um, and pushing into that choke point because you got a, a hook on a target cost them the dragon. So instead of being able to capitalize on the early dragon take that they had uh, to be able to start stacking more, they instead lose the dragon, hand over three kills to Twitch, who was previously behind in lane, and now you can see the problem from that. And Set and Garen do trade one for one. Um, and I think without Garen being able to have a global presence through a TP, I, I think maybe a few more visits top lane from the Fiddle Six would have been beneficial. But at the same time, I don't know. The Fiddle Six was able to capitalize on the Flash being down for Yone and netting the Syndra a few kills. Um, and the Flash is just now coming back online. So, they did they managed to set the Yone behind. And I guess you can't you can't expect to set every lane behind through jungle pressure. So he did a good job getting the Jinx ahead in the mid lane at, um, ahead as well. I do really wish I could see. Um, I really wish I could see the, the farm. Because I think Depressed Panda had a nice amount of gold at the end of the game through farm. Yeah. You can see the silence is just not doing enough and Set is winning out in these trades. And this is a good visit top lane. Um, so yeah, so he did manage to go down Oh, go up there and get and get him a kill. The problem is Sejuani takes a gank down bot. <laughs> that that actually does go well for them. Uh, well, well for Jinx, she does manage to get a double kill out of out of a two v four. So well played by them to be able to at least get that. Um, of course, the Yone ult I think to get in under the turret was a mistake. Um, pretty big blunder, but got a nice invade here. Um, after that, like botch tower dive, had had the Twitch poison not been, been so strong, Jinx would have walked away with a double kill and won that trade two for one. You can see that the gold lead is now dropped to just two hundred. A lot of these kills and shutdowns have netted a lot of gold for the red side, which is a bit unfortunate.
beam. You can see the warning around bot lane, trying to watch versus 20 again, but the Garen can't really even leave top lane to ward uh, so much. Luckily the fiddlesticks totems are helping with that. But you see, lanes of stun doesn't have any follow-up damage. And this is the next big mistake here. So yeah, Twitch has clearly become a problem. He's now godlike. There's only one pink ward on the map. Okay. So I'm going to take a pause real quick. Only one pink ward on the map for the Twitch. I stated earlier, Jinx cannot farm alone with the Twitch around. Um, by the time she's able to react to it, half the health is going to be gone in any situation. That pink ward needs to move from that tri brush over into the lane, or they should have one on their person drop in case, uh, you know, they're feeling, um, I guess, exposed. Um, anyway, somebody's spamming my Twitch chat with crap offers. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, but yeah, I, so Fiddlesticks has not yet got his Zanyas here. And so you can see how the previous mistake of the blue buff invade has now paid off negatively in this situation here. So it would have been a nice, a really nice fiddle six ult here had he been able to Zanya's. Three people, they're in a 3v4, you go on ace coming to join. But. So yeah, see the set damage coming through, killing the fiddle six where he's not able to do any anything afterwards. And I don't know why Garen stepped back in after that there, but end up taking a uh, three for one there. And I'm not putting that all in the fiddle six, um, not by a long shot. Let's see here. I want to take a closer look at this if I can, but they hook the target. Yeah. Honestly, I think the problem with Syndra, Syndra's positioning here caused Yone to get a knock up when she has some good um, time to try to free fire with people. So Yone was able to kind of stop Syndra from being as effective as she could have been. The lack of stopwatch or Zanya's there meant that Fiddlesticks couldn't stay up and be protected. And he just doesn't do enough damage to eat through the Sejuani and the set right now. Garen, as we can see, was already falling behind. So he certainly can't do it. Yep. Yeah. And Jinx got lucky that she turned that around. Um, it's unfortunate the the poison is just so so broken on uh, AP Twitch, but now we have zero pink boards around the map. Vision is starting to get a little bit scarce. It got a little bit in bot side jungle, but and now a little bit in the top side, so you can see him coming, which is good. They're setting up the dragon. Getting the crab. Yeah. Getting the crab, getting the flash, getting the the um, vision down, but there are no pink words on the map. Nautilus should be carrying one at all times. And everybody else should be as well. But yeah. Here's the other reason why Fiddlesticks is having a rough time against Sejuani. He tries to get into the team, get into the uh, to the face of the squishies. She ults. He suddenly isn't as effective as he was previously. Um. But yeah. So 
I'm going back and looking at these fights pretty closely. At least as close as I can with the like footage I have available. So yeah, so rooting up the Sejuani, which the other reason the fight here, the Rift Herald, didn't go as well as it could have, is that the person that has all the kills, well not all the kills, but a lot of the kills on the team, and at this point probably the most gold and damage, is not present because she died to the switch trying to keep the lane from pushing down bot. So you don't have anybody to eat through the tanks like Sejuani and Set, who've gotten themselves ahead either by solo uh, pushing top against this Garen or being with the Twitch helping him get the kills. I mean, so they needed Syndra to be able to eat through the tanks, but then Yone stopped her from being effective. But anyway, obviously you see this here. Great time for Twi uh, uh, Fiddlesticks ult. But yeah. Unfortunately, he just isn't able to finish anybody off. Yeah. And then the Twitch comes in from the side, I believe, right? Yeah, you see him here as the fight's breaking out. Pretty sure he goes invisible. So yeah, just gets a nice play on the Jinx there. Once again, taking out damage to deal with anybody here. I wouldn't have wasted the flash there. You're dead no matter what. Um, that Twitch invisibility has reset. Like, and there's what the full team around you. Yeah, so just don't don't waste flash. Um. But yeah, a lot of this boils down to positioning this whole game. Um, and Twitch taking the superior positioning throughout all of it. Um, which he does have the benefit of being invisible and getting set up where he wants to before he makes his presence known. So obviously, that's a problem. But yeah. <laughs> You can see how much damage he did to the Garen by himself. Without the ult. <laughs> Garen, at this point, I... I... I'd rather see a Ghost Garen than a Ignite Garen, because... There's just no value throughout the rest of this game. But also, he's had no global presence this whole game, because of the lack of teleport. But yeah. This is one thing. Oh, I didn't go back far enough. Sorry. We had no global presence. I don't think he's been in in the fights anywhere besides at the um, Rift Herald. But they managed to get you on a position, which is great here. But then you see the vision is kind of dark here in the top side jungle. No pink wars to protect against the Twitch that we know has been lurking around here. And then easy three quarters health uh, expunge there to take out the fiddle six. Yeah. And then, sorry, I'm pausing a lot, but Syndra farming here when we know fiddle six just died top side. We have no vision on anybody because their side is completely dark means that mid is not safe to push right now because you don't even have a tier one or tier two turret to fall back on um and no help if you go down the bot side there, there's nobody to help you out should you be caught out like this and then it's a kill partially because of the expended flash from the previous fight around drake Yeah. They do end up getting the mid turret off of that, so I mean that does open up the mid lane a little bit, which is beneficial. But not every kill. And then here is just yeah. Another free Twitch kill. 
because no pink wars across the map except for at Drake in the little single bush. I believe the game stops here soon. Yep, there it is. So basically the game ends in three more minutes from this point. <laughs> you can hear these godlike there. But yeah, so take a look here. One, four, and two when the team gets 15 kills. I mean, so he was only present present for one-fifth of the team's kills. So no global presence on the Garen. I honestly would love to see them take teleport top lane. They had this problem last week with their top laner where they didn't have teleport. Oh, hang on. I was still talking there. So, I'll go ahead and pause. Oop. But yeah, they had this problem last week where their top laner didn't have teleport. Kind of kept them out of the game. Um, and then here, we have no teleport again. There was not a single moment in that game where Ignite put Set in any sort of danger. Basically, no kill pressure on him throughout it. Um, so, teleport is just much better pick there. You do see that Fiddlesticks, get, they get a Zhonyas at, at some point. Um, I wish I could have seen a fight where he was able to get a nice like flank ult with that. But, unfortunately, it we don't get to see the last few minutes. Um, and I, I'm not sure if he was able to get anything off. Um, given the twitch uh, and his invisibility. Um, but yeah, but then Sintra with a scoreline of 172. Obviously, the way that she's playing in the early game isn't the reason why she ended up with that scoreline. It ended up being the twitch that caused that to happen. But she still has almost the most amount of gold. You can see Fiddlesticks with his roaming getting the kills mid and bot has the most on the team. And then Jinx with those early kills and early turret plates is right behind him. So Syndra with only, you know, one kill and two assists. It, it, it means that she probably was farming pretty well in the lane, lane ball against an opponent that should have the upper hand on her. Um, so that's a highlight there. But the other thing is, once again, one and two means she was not present for the majority of the kills in the game. Would have liked to see maybe a little bit more like global use from the teleport, maybe assisting in some of the ganks, um, or using it to split push and then teleporting into the fights. Um, tough to say, like, and for sure it would have been entirely beneficial but i believe it was used to get back to lane every time um so maybe a little bit more global pressure from teleport would be beneficial um i mean bot lane was a highlight for me except i do wish and you can see he has one in his inventory there but i would love to have seen one in jinx's inventory and fiddle fiddlesticks has one in its inventory but they needed to have bought these a lot sooner. As soon as Twitch, you know, it, if they're able to analyze and see that Twitch was the problem, Twitch was the win condition, the one that they needed to focus and, and be worried about, like they should have pink wars on them. Probably would have been a good idea whenever any fight started, just assume that the Twitch is there and drop pink wars at their feet or somewhere around them. So they're aware of his presence and can get him before he's able to exit his invisibility. Um, but yeah, so bot lane was a highlight. I would say be careful with the positioning for both the mid laner and the ADC. Um, but yeah, and also if you're looking to play something like Fiddlesticks, you need to make sure to ban Sijuani um, or any any tanks like her um, that have hard CC that will keep you rooted in place um, 
because if Fiddlesticks Sticks can't get into the team, then the ult is not going to be nearly as effective as it could have been. Uh, but also, as you can see many times, if the Sintra and Chinx aren't able to do the damage, Sijuana is just not going to die, as evidenced by the two deaths. Um, so I would say be mindful in the picks and bans. If you have an idea of who you're going to be picking, make sure you're also banning away somebody that will make your team unable to accomplish the way that they fight. Um, and I don't know if Syndra was blind picked and they just picked Yone into it. Um, but I would definitely say I would be careful about blind picking any mid laners. Um, it just seems that like every game that I've watched there so far, the mid lane has been picked as a losing lane, which makes it difficult for them to get ahead. Sinja, like I said, I think played the landing phase pretty well, but um, I'd be careful about blind picking the mid laner in the future because that seems to be a consistent problem. I would look at maybe getting your solid bot lane in first, um, picking the top laner, and then finishing off with the jungle and mid. Um, that's obviously not going to be something you can do every single time. It might be that you want to pick up somebody and make sure that you have them available uh, early on. Um, I also don't know what their champion pools look like, so that does also limit options. Um, it could be that they felt very comfortable playing Sentra and Ione. Um, but yeah. So, ultimately, looking at the enemy's win condition and figuring out how to deal with that quickly I think is going to be a big thing to work on, considering... I did the math yesterday, and the rest of the team did around 34, 35,000 damage. Which means Twitch did almost 50% of the team's damage throughout the entire game. Um, so yeah. And from what I've seen so far, it does seem when the carries get fed, they have a tendency to not be able to get to them or focus them down in the fights um, consistently. So that would be something I would definitely look for in the future is make sure that as a team you're communicating with um, like what what targets you need to be focusing down. It doesn't always need to be, oh, we caught this frontline person, let's focus them down. Maybe it's we caught them, let's move behind them now that they're stunned and get to the back line. Um, but, uh, but yeah, ultimately, I think the lane swaps were a great idea. Um, this team, with how it is currently, has some great potential. There's just some things to kind of shore up and, and work on. But I did enjoy seeing the early roams, the uh, early Drake kill um, to try to get that stacking. Um, I would like to see more vision and consistent vision throughout the game um but i did like that they also prepared for future drakes ahead of time like a good minute or so um rather than reacting to it spawning and trying to get there before the enemy team has already taken it um so yeah so i think that's really all i have to say about this game um if anybody wants to uh have me look at any any footage or has any thoughts about what I said here, definitely just leave a comment um, and let me know. Uh, feel free to send clips um, or even full games. I would love to analyze it. What's, I don't. I said this in my previous video, I don't exactly have any, um, I don't have any qualifications for why I should be doing this. I just enjoy it. Um, and I'm looking to be educational and to potentially help out any players that are trying to figure out like what went wrong with my game because a lot of times it is difficult to to look at yourself and and figure out 
where things went wrong, it can be beneficial to have a, um, you know, another pair of eyes look at something and just kind of tell you, uh, you know, give you give their opinion on where things might have gone wrong. Um, yeah, but just let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you'd like to see more of, uh, or tell me where I was wrong in my opinions. Um, accept it. I, I will accept any criticism. But anyway, thank you for watching. See you next time.